Saquon Barkley, one of the best running backs in the league, is a Philadelphia Eagle. The league for agency NFL continues to shock you every single time. Hey, Winks, let's get to the details of the contract. According to Adam Schefter, a three-year, nearly $38 million contract could be worth up to $47 million, and that includes $26 million fully guaranteed. For all of you out there, it is basically a half step, a half notch below what Jonathan Taylor got in the middle of last season. What do we think about this, Hayden? Because it has felt like, and I'm sure I'm forgetting someone, the Eagles haven't truly invested in a running back since like the Brian Westbrook days. And this is absolutely the biggest swing that we've seen from Howie Roseman. They had the Miles Sanders one in the second round, but like financially, it's been a long time. And it's since then, they've basically just done market manipulation here by going free, free, free at the running back position. And now the salary cap, uh, it's completely exploded so relative to like the percentage of the salary cap versus the Alvin Kamara contract, the Derrick Henry contracts, the Aaron Jones contracts from a couple years ago. It's even less. And then of course, Howie Roseman buys the dip with Saquon Barkley bringing him home. So this is a fascinating scheme fit as yes. well, just because historically the Eagles have not thrown the ball to the running backs though. Last year they did a little bit more than the year prior with DeAndre Swift, who's a little bit better than Miles Sanders in that aspect. And I do think that Saquon Barkley will get schemed up passes uh, because he's just fairly way better than Miles Sanders and oh. what DeAndre Swift showed of the last couple of seasons. There, there, there's some interesting facets of that. Okay. First, let's take in recent memory what we know about this Philadelphia Eagles team. Just back to last year, DeAndre Swift got 49 targets. Kenny Gainwell got 37 targets. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now we bring in Kellen Moore. And Nick Sirianni has said that this is going to be the bones, the structure of a Kellen Moore offense. And he is going to call. Obviously, we've seen the pass with Kellen Moore, Tony Pollard's explosion, getting other running backs, Austin Eckler involved in that. But then you also have, have to wonder if it's more of a Jalen Hurts thing, right? If that type of quarterback wants to check it down as consistently or in the phase of the play to his running back. So... I don't know if I can make the leap that we're going to now get back to 70 targets from Saquon Barkley here. It's absolutely possible, but things have to align in order for that to work. Mm -hmm. But even if it doesn't, to me, what stands out of this grouping is how different of an environment from a rushing standpoint <laughs> this is going to be for Saquon Barkley. Producer Weaves, here are the notes, okay? Saquon Barkley was hit in the backfield on 46.6% of his carries last year. That's the third highest rate of any running back in the league. DeAndre Swift was hit in the backfield on 28% of his carries in 2023. That's the lowest rate of wow. any of the running backs in the league last year. Yeah. It's that simple. You lose Jason Kelsey. You shift over Cam Jurgens. There's a hole at one of the guard spots. But from what we have seen Saquon Barkley as a game-changing, explosive play, making running back, that's in many bad situations, and arguably, he's in the best situation imaginable across the league right now. If you're an explosive running back, you need some space to operate, and Saquon Barkley, we have not seen that for years and years, and now we finally will. Eagles last year, 16th in running back receptions. I think they'll be somewhere in that range. I think that's good enough because Saquon Barkley was not scoring touchdowns for the Giants because the Giants stunk. He will score touchdowns with the Eagles, and if you really want to galaxy brain this, I wonder if they're going to push push as much this year with Jalen Hurts because there's no more of the Jason Kelsey. I wonder Correct. if they're going to actually hand the ball off to Saquon Barkley, a running back they actually trust versus DeAndre Swift. So I wonder if the touchdown department could go up for the running back backfield for the Eagles just because they can trust Saquon Barkley in all these phases. So just comparing where the Giants are in running back usage, which is like taking expected fantasy points. The Giants last year were, were 29th the Eagles could be top 10 this right. year, even if Jalen Hurts not going to throw the ball as much, even if he is going to get some goal line carries because the Eagles are actually good at football. To your point on short yardage, inside the five-yard line carries last year, Jalen Hurts was sixth in the NFL with 16. He scored 13 touchdowns. On those. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> if, if we go way down the list, the next closest Philadelphia Eagle was DeAndre Swift. He had 10 attempts and scored just two of them. Again, that goes back to the DeAndre Swift video that we just did, that he's he kept falling. not as good <laughs> in those short yardage situations. Uh, Saquon Barkley's exceptional in all phases of the game. And 
as much as we like to think that Jalen Hurts and just practicing the tush push is the reason why it's so successful, I would not be shocked if Jason Kelsey was the reason it was so successful. And if they can just implement it as successfully in the future as they did in the past. And if not, Saquon Barkley is the one that is going to be the major beneficiary of this. Why do you think Howie Roseman chose the 2024 offseason versus like the last five, seven years? It's felt like that he's just rotated dudes in that backfield. I mean, I guess DeMarco Murray might be the last big investment he's had yeah. there too. Um, and, you know, making late round pick swaps or trades and all that stuff. And why now? Is it because Saquon Barkley is legitimately a top five player at the position in the league? I and, those, and those rarely come around in terms of just any player at any position, period. I think that's a part of it. I also think that he's been obsessed with trying to get the wide receiver spot correct, and he finally has the two of those guys for the last couple off seasons. So now you can p- kind of put the missing ingredient at the running back spot. And they also had Miles Sanders out there. So uh, going back to the DeAndre Swift thing, I think they were probably just frustrated that they was production to be had, that DeAndre Swift, in my opinion, was leaving on the table. And I think that you're buying the dip with Saquon Barkley. It's basically a two-year, $26 million contract going with, with the guarantees there. And then it's just a team option for year three. I think that's totally fine. Fourth highest at the position uh, when he totally hits free agency. I think that's totally fine. And then back to the percentage of the cap, it's just way low, lower now than what the running backs used to get uh, previously. So with Jalen Hurts taking a step back last last year in general, giving him a, a, an easy outlet, I do think would make some sense. They would get blitzed a ton. Could Saquon Barkley help out in that area? Perhaps so as well. So I think the timing does make some sense here. But I, th- I think for the most part really is just it's a smaller percentage of the cap than it used to be. The test case of what the Eagles are this year, because you, to me, cannot go – more different than from the Shane Steichen to the Brian Johnson to now Kellen Moore of it all. I mean, Shane Steichen, obviously a fantastic yeah. coach, but now we get to Kellen Moore and he's very different in how he calls offenses than how Nick Sirianni has viewed this type of offense in the last couple of years. They will work the middle of the field more often, right? I just am intrigued to see if it's going to be inside zone after inside zone after inside zone over and over because it has been successful. And again, this is also why you pay someone like Jeff Stoutland who helps not just the offensive line, which you have to replace at least one of those guys. Um, but that's just the running game in, entirely. And one final note, every offseason, players that got injured one year, we frequently have to, uh, let's say, guard them and um, debate the people who say they're just injury prone. I will point to, obviously, in September 20 of 2020, Saquon Barkley had an ACL and MCL tear. Uh, since then, he stepped on a teammate's ankle. Uh, he had a stinger. And then last year, he did miss three to four weeks due to an ankle sprain. But that's it over the last three seasons. He's been extremely healthy. And I want to repeat, look at how many running backs that were signed today versus the first few days of free agency in previous years. The NFL is cyclical. And we're at that cycle now that I think running backs are being valued more so than they have been in the last five years. Yeah, it's really fun for fantasy purposes. Jonathan Taylor sits at like 15th overall run running system there as well. Have some concerns about the pass catching, have some concerns about the goal line carry Saquon, Jonathan Taylor, same contract, basically the same age. Can I say something ridiculous right, right next to Jonathan Taylor? Why shouldn't Saquon be the running back two overall? Yeah, I have him personally. I have him 14th overall, the beginning of the second round. I have him like right next to Kyron Williams, Jameer Gibbs, and uh, well, Jonathan Taylor right at the okay. turn. Kyron Williams is an incredible role and was incredibly productive in it last year, right? Yeah. What if Saquon Barkley has the same role and is just a better football player? He is a better football player. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So how it is being drafted right now for all of you on your underdog drafts. Chris McCaffrey is a running back one. Brees Hall's a running back two. Bijan running back three. Then Jameer Gibbs, Kyron Williams, Jonathan Taylor, and then Achan as running back seven. An easy argument to me mm-hmm. can be made that Saquon Barkley should be the running back two overall. Wow. I, I think I have the top three kind of set with Brees Hall and Bijan, but then I think Kyron, Gibbs, Taylor, and now Sa- Saquon. I do think that's kind of a tier for me, and then I'd put Achan at the end of it. 
but it's like legit impossible outside of an injury for Saquon Barkley to fail this season, in my opinion, because yeah. the structure of the offense is impeccable. Offensive line play is outstanding. They're going to score points. Like Kellen Moore is a very good play caller, unless it just doesn't fit well. And on top of it, there's going to be some, I believe, hidden upside versus in previous years because we might see more and more short yardage yeah. touchdowns yeah. than we have in previous years. Yeah, I'm not going to be the one that's fading Saquon Barkley. I feel like other people, if you had a different host, they would be saying, still, he's probably the 25th. You got to make sure you have T. Higgins and Jalen Waddle ahead of him because they're wide receivers. Uh, I'm ahead of those guys. Uh, and we already know on the opposite end of this, the New York Giants have replaced Saquon Barkley with Devin Singletary. Uh, what can go wrong? A, it's a bit of a different change. We'll have probably a video on that. Uh, Giants fans are in love with Saquon Barkley and now having to watch him in a Philadelphia Eagles jersey at least twice a year is what the NFL is all about, baby. <laughs> I mean, it crushes your heart. The tough part is they could have franchise tagged Daniel Jones and then signed Saquon Barkley to a two or three year deal. And now you wouldn't have the Daniel Jones salary cap situation. Uh, and you would still have Saquon Barkley, but all right, everyone hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and we will talk to you on the next one. See ya.